as a beginner, for loops can look pretty confusing. So in this video, I'll show you how to write a for loop in your Java program. Hey, it's Alex back again helping you write working code in your Java programs. On this channel, I make Java tutorials just like this all the time, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. Let's kick it off how we always do by starting a new Java project and calling it our for loop tutorial. And we'll hit OK and throw a class in here. And this will be our Java file. We'll just call it for loops again. Hit this first check mark, hit finish, and we're good. So in my previous video, we've been printing a lot of stuff to the screen using system.out.println. So let's just revisit that real quick and we'll see how for loops can play into this. Let's print out something, let's print out effect. Okay, let's say I love dogs. There should be a T there. It's a fact, I love dogs. So let's save that and run that and we'll see that I love dogs shows up on the screen. But what if you had a task to print this out five times? Okay, that's no big deal. I'll just copy and paste that a total of five times, run that again, and we've, we've got our five, just like you said. Well, let's try to do that a hundred times. Okay, well, we can do that by copying this again, doing some math. So that's 10, and then I can copy this nine more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll save that and run that, and that'll show our 100 I Love Dogs. But what if we're tasked with printing it out 59 million and 13 times? Do you want to copy this 59 million and 13 times? Probably not. And so what if I told you that you can write this as many times as you want with just three lines of code? That's what a for loop does for you. Let's remove all of this and start fresh. To repeat code, you use a for loop. There are two things you need to know when you write a for loop. One, how many times do you want to repeat the code? And two, what do you want to repeat? You write a for loop like this. Don't worry about what it looks like right now. I'll explain everything in a second. Put our dog in there. I love dogs. Okay. The first thing we needed to know was how many times do we want to repeat this code? And that's what this 10 is. The second thing was, what do we want to repeat? Well, we want to rep repeat printing out this I love dogs text. Let's save it, run it, and we'll see I love dogs get print out 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this number is how many times you want to repeat it. So if I change that to 3 and saved it, it would print it out 3 times. If I changed it to that number earlier, 59, 59 million and 13, I think. Save it and run it. There it goes. It'll print out 59 million and 13 times. Sorry, I got a thing there. Let's stop it, because that's an insane amount to be printing. I know I love dogs, but like, yeesh. So we can say how many times we want to repeat it, and then what we repeat. We could repeat anything. Like, um, if you're a cat person, you could say, I love cats. Maybe do that four times, and it'll come out like this. So now we know we can repeat whatever code we want with a for loop for however many times we want to do it. But there's also a hidden trick you can do with a for loop, and it's actually this variable i. Every time it repeats, this variable i will change. And that's something that's super useful in coding. Let me show you what I mean. We start the for loop with the keyword for, like we did earlier, and we'll set up a variable. It doesn't have to be called i, it's just usually called i. It's good practice to use i, so I'm going to do that because I pretty much use this variable name all the time. Next, we set how many times we want to do it. Let's say we want to do this 15 times. And then this third part here means increment i by one. Then wrap the statement we want to print or want to run in curly braces. And we're gonna print out that variable i just to see what's going on. So let's save it and run it make this a little bigger, we see our cats here, and then we see the second statement, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up until 14. Hmm, okay, so looks like it was run 15 times, because 1 through 14 plus 0 is 15. 
it started at zero and then went up until 14. And that's because this code runs while i is less than 15. If we wanted it to go to 15, we'd say less than or equal to 15. Run that and it would go to 15. This is very useful if you have an array and you want to print out all the values in your array. What you can do is you can make your array. We'll have an array of like test grades and we'll say we got a 98, we got a 100, maybe we did bad, we got a 83, um, 90, and 93, like that. And that's a comma, should be a comma. Let's make this a little bigger so you can see. If we wanted to get all the values in this array, what we can do is just throw them in a for loop. We set our start, which will be at zero. We'll set our end, which will be, let's see, the length of the grades array. And a little shortcut you can do is do grades.length, like this, and that'll get the length of the array, which is one, two, three, four, five. Okay? And then we do I++ just to tell it that we're gonna go up by one each time, and we'll print out the value inside of grades. We repeat this code each time, and the variable i changes. The first time it'll be zero, so we'll get grades at zero, then we'll get grades at one, then two, then three, then four. So let's see what happens when we save it and run it. We have our cats, we have the zero to 15 we, like we did earlier, and then we have each of our text, test scores, 98, 183, and so on. I've been programming for more than seven years now, and I've realized that these are the three most common ways that people use for loops. You can repeat code over and over again. You can repeat code with the special variable i, or you can repeat code and use that special variable i to access elements in an array or something like an array. Question of the day, if you could repeat anything as much as you wanted, what would it be? Connect with me in the comments and engage with this community of new programmers. Make sure to subscribe so you see all my newest videos the day they come out, and if this was helpful, smash that like button and share it if you think it might help someone you know. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me, and I appreciate it. Catch ya.